Hi, in today's video, I want to talk to you about an AI that can do text to image, image to image, photorealistic images, paintings, 3D render looks, and mockups. What's unique is the 3D model to image feature. That's right, you can use a 3D model, rotate it, and then generate an image from it. Uh, you can go to the CG Dream AI website and test it for free. Um, if you like it, you can uh, switch to the premium version to remove limitations. Right when you open the website, you can see what other people have generated from text prompts. Uh, you can also see generations based on images. If you hover over an image, you'll notice a small icon uh, indicating it used a reference image. Uh, the third option, and my favorite, is uh, generations from a 3D model. These are marked with a tiny cube icon to show um, they were based on a 3D model. You can sign in with your Google on Facebook or CG Trader account. Once you are logged in, you can start experimenting. Describe your prompt with details about what you want to generate, including the subject details, environment, lighting, style, and so on. You have two options. You can generate the prompt as it is, or you can use AI to enhance your prompt. This way, even short prompts will result in nice generations. I will use the generate option in this case, depending on how many people are using it, you might have to wait for your generation. Sometimes it takes a few seconds, and other times it might take up to a minute. I'll speed up the video when I edit this recording so you don't have to wait. When you um, hover over the image, you can see some buttons. The down arrow button lets you download the image. Next to it, there's a, a heart icon that uh, lets you add the image to your favorites. If you click the favorite menu, um, you can find all your favorite images there. You can also delete your generation from this icon. If you click on the 2x button, you can upscale the image by two times, but you will need to wait a little longer for it to be upscaled. Once it's upscaled, the 2x button moves from the right to the left side, allowing you to switch between the original and upscaled versions. As you can see, the upscaled image is clearer and sharper. You can also submit your images to challenges. Click on the challenge menu to see what challenges are available. Then click on rules and prizes to check the timer, see how you can participate, learn how to submit, and find out the categories and what you can earn. Click on the My Images menu to go back to your generations. Let's try another prompt. Cute cartoon, bunny in a magical forest. On the right, you have more options. Um, you can choose the aspect ratio. The first is square, the second is portrait, and the last two are landscape orientation. You can generate from one to four variations at once. Prompt Guidance works similarly to the CFG option in Stable Diffusion. You can auto-enhance prompts, is using DreamUp and adds related filters to prompts that have three or fewer words. The seed can be random or fixed, and you can also add negative prompts for things you don't want to appear in your generation. This time, since the prompt is short, I will let the AI improve it. Yeah, not bad for a short prompt, but we can do even better. Next to the prompt area, you have Filters, you can also press the enter key shortcut to call up and update filters, and you can add up to five filters. These are LoRa models trained in a certain style. Filters are immediately recommended based on the entered prompt, but the filter search overrides the prompt recommendation, allowing you to search for a different filter. You, know, you can pick from a list of over 200 filters or search for your favorite. Um, let's see what we can find with uh, fantasy, and I think I'll go with fantasy art, and um, as you can see, it's added to the left. Let's search for another one, something with cartoon, and I'll choose this manga cartoon. Now let's find another one. This one with dressed animals looks interesting. Yeah, as you can see, I now have all three filters, and uh, you can use the sliders to tell the AI how strongly each style should influence the generation. You can also delete them using the recycle bin icon. Hit generate when you are ready. Um, I really like the result. It's nice and clean. Um, if you have premium, you can turn on the private toggle for future generations. Um, you can also check each image for a lock icon, which you can click to make the image um, private or public. The images created with filters have a lines icon in the bottom left. I will add it to the favorites really quick. Um, here you can see a few of my favorite generations. Let's go back, and one thing to remember is that if you want to do something different, remove the existing filters or uploads from the left. 
Now that we've talked a bit about uh, text to image, let's uh, switch to image to image and 3D model to image. You can upload an image that you'd like to use as a reference. For example, um, I have this cute bear. Uh, there is a slider um, for resemblance that controls how similar the generation should be to the original photo. I'll try with 0.35 to see what I can get. And for the prompt, I'll write something like cute cartoon panda in wearing a, a ballerina dress. I'll add a white background. Um, and for style, maybe digital painting and kawaii. After hitting generate and checking the result, I got a nice generation, but the original bear is too strong. So I'll reduce the resemblance and, and try again. The panda is starting to appear, so we are getting closer. I'll reduce the resemblance even more. It's not a standard value and depends on the image, so you just have to play around and, and see what works for you. Now we have the cute panda as I wanted. I started with this bear and ended with this cute panda. Another thing I like is the in-painting option. If you use this brush, you can paint over the area where you want to change something. For example, I want to add a gift there. Now, as you can see in the prompt area, it says in painting. So you put the things you want to appear in that area. In my case, a pink gift box, hit in paint button, and uh, the result is um, a panda with a gift box. Now let's try a 3D model. But first, remember to you know delete the image reference. Click upload and uh, choose a 3D model with the extension .fbx or .glb. I have a Halloween coffin I recently made in Blender. Uh, you can rotate and move the 3D model into the position you want. If you hold the left mouse button, you can rotate around. With the right mouse button, you can pan or move the object. And with the mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. It's pretty simple. If you choose the walk option, you can navigate like in games using the W, A, S, and D keys. However, for 3D, I prefer the default orbit option. The walkthrough option is useful if using an interior or environment 3D model, as orbiting is inconvenient in those cases. Orbit is useful when there is a single object in the center. I think I will go with the front view, and you also have an option to untoggle the ground if you want the object to appear in the air. I'll quickly describe in the prompt uh, how I want the coffin to look, including details about the environment, the material, and so on. Then I'll hit generate, and this is the result. Pretty cool. If you see an image with this um, cube icon in the corner, you can click on it to see the 3D model used to generate that image. In my case, it was the coffin. Now let's move it around and maybe get a close-up shot of it. This time, I'll play around with some filters. Maybe, uh, I'll, maybe I'll choose a material um, and cartoon filter. Uh, change the prompt and then hit generate. Sometimes you have to click on my images to see your generation. At the time of this recording, it, it's still in beta from what I heard, so it might have some bugs. While I wait, I can upscale the previous generation. I'll skip to the result, which is this one. Pretty interesting. Now I will um, remove the filters and the 3D model. If you don't have a 3D model, you can choose from existing ones in the 3D model gallery. It has all kinds of 3D models to choose from. CG Dream is part of CG Trader, which you might have heard of if you've worked with 3D models and done uh, 3D renders. I will choose this perfume bottle. It doesn't matter if it has labels or text, since when you add the prompt, you can make it look how you want. Let's say um, I want to generate a mock-up for a perfume bottle. Maybe I'll place the bottle on the left and uh, leave some space for text on the right. I'll search for a filter. Maybe this um, you know, product ad filter will work well for what I want. Then I need to describe the prompt. I'll add it quickly here and hit generate. I misspelled some words, so I'll adjust the prompt quickly and try again. Now I got exactly what I had in mind. Um, you know, without a 3D model, it would be um, hard to get the exact position of the model. Um, I'll click on the cube icon and try a different angle uh, with the same prompt um, to see if I get a similar design. Um, the result is quite similar. Um, if you want almost the same design, you probably need to use the same seed and mention more details like how the bottle cap should look and so on. 
You can generate with an empty prompt if you are you are using DreamUp. Just click on it, and it will create a random generation. For example, I got this cute kitchen interior. Auto enhance uh, for short prompts is uh, on by default. Let me turn it off and test it um, without this feature to compare. I will try a short three-word prompt like a white bunny. Uh, since we didn't provide more information, we get a normal bunny. Let's get more creative by adding filters. I'll add dressed animals. Also, plant grass could be interesting. I also want a cartoon one, so I'll search for it in the filters and pick manga cartoon. Hit generate. Remember that you can change the filter influence by moving sliders. You can delete filters or add up to five filters in total. And the result is this cartoon bunny. Let's turn the auto enhance for short prompts back on to see how it influences our generation. Click generate. And since the prompt is three words or fewer, it should automatically use dream up and filters. The result is this clean cartoon bunny dressed up in the grass. So we started with a basic bunny then added filters, and finally used both filters and auto enhance uh, with AI for the last version. If you want more control over the generation, you can add more details to your prompt. For example, um, you could mention that the bunny has glasses, is in a magical forest, um, include some colors, and um, add a lamp. Then hit the dream up button. You can generate multiple images simultaneously hit generate second time and then once more for the third time another option is to use four variations instead of one to get more images and here are the results i think they came out pretty cute what do you think i played around with the same prompt but this time i added a few more filters like cartoon fantasy and cartoon animals um, I think it turned out quite cool, so I will submit it to the challenge using this button. Uh, I just got a confirmation that it was submitted. You can also find ideas for prompts or remix other people's prompts by going to the gallery. Uh, there, you'll see a lot of public generations. If you click on one, you can see uh, the prompt and the filters used for that generation. Let's go back and see what else we can find. I like... Uh, this woman portrait, so I clicked on it. Uh, on the left, uh, you can see it has uh, two filters, and this is the prompt used. If you want something with the same um, prompt but different variations, uh, you can change the filters. For example, I can add witch and uh, fantasy woman filters and um, maybe reduce the metallic filter. Um, the result is this cool portrait. I can increase the image resolution by um, upscaling it. Uh, you can see the original image and uh, the new upscaled image. I always add my own twist to the prompt um, to make it more interesting. So um, instead of a woman, I put a witch. And instead of headphones, I added a witch hat. I removed the part related to the headphones. And instead of listening to music, maybe she should be casting a spell. I hit generate. And this is the result I got. How cool is that? If you need help, you can click on the community button that leads to a Discord server where you can post um, your questions. In conclusion, what I like the most is that I can use 3D models to get more control over the generation. I hope they add even more models in the future um, and provide more control, like the ability to add multiple 3D models in a scene. The filters or LoRa models are quite useful, and there is a big variety. I appreciate that they offer a free version so people can still use and test it without paying. But the premium option is quite cheap compared to Midjourney or Dolly. Uh, I still sometimes do 3D renders, but it is very time consuming to uh, set up materials, lights, and uh, wait for the render. Uh, being able to use a 3D model and get a quick render with only a few words is quite useful. I am trying to make videos on AI tools that can help the community. I had to turn down a few collaborations because they tried to dictate what I should say, like claiming their product is the best on the planet instead of allowing me to do an honest review of their product. So 
no, um, I don't do things like that. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching um, and have a great day. I want to thank CG Dream AI for sponsoring this video.